and welcome to the very first episode of Exploring the Fairlight Series 3. Tonight we're going to have a little bit of fun sampling some bongos. I'll show you how instruments and voices are set up, how they're routed to various different um, output channels on the router, how they're um, how you route MIDI uh, to it through the various different ports and channels, and then we'll round things off by uh, poking around in caps the composer, arranger, performer, sequencer, uh, which is kind of like the next step uh, beyond the uh, famous rhythm sequencer or page R that you would see in the Fairlight series 2x um, so buckle up and let's have some fun
Okay. <clears throat> I've got some instruments set up here. Um, let's talk about the bongos, right? So I just set that up. It's three sub voices, which is three separate samples. And they are spread out across the keyboard as such. So that's sub voice one, which is this low bongo. That's sub voice two, which is the higher bongo. And that's the slapping sound. Now, if we go and take a look at the voice setup, there's an instrument that contains the voice, and the voice is made up of three sub voices. The infinity is two, which is defined here, right? Um, it goes and it goes across. So if I wanted to add additional, I would just turn on additional blocks here. And all that means is, is, is that it's going to use, it can use two channel cards. And if I come over here and look at my output, so these are, the, this is the channel card activity, the 16 channel cards. And then this is the router activity and the router is a separate set of outputs on the back of the Fairlight. Um, and this is more analogous, um, or, or lines up actually directly with um my mixer right so i have channels one through eight nine through 16 and these are all corresponding you know to specific router channels coming out of the back of the uh, of the cmi and when i play those bongos um two channel cards and when i play two different sub voices at the same time You'll see the two channels light up, and yet what's actually being output is one monophonic channel. Let's go here. Right? Now, this is also true. So this planet alias it's actually this is a stereo voice something i sampled out of Cosar beach alias and as you can see because it's stereo um it takes up two channels per note of polyphony. So in this case I've got three notes of polyphony I can play, but that actually takes up six channels. Um, and I have it going out router one and three. My my number two router channel has got something wonky on it, so I don't I don't I rarely ever output to, to router channel two. I use channels one and three as kind of a stereo pair. And so if we go look at the What's going on here on the output when i play a single note now it's stereo right so that's why it's coming out one and three as i add a second note right so if you think about it the instrument is like a container for the voice. The voice uh, uses up channel cards, which is a hardware thing inside the Fairlight. Uh, and then in terms of, and, and I could absolutely uh, connect XLR cables to, to each of the outputs on the back of the channel cards and, and then connect those into my mixer. And then what would happen is 
as I played more notes, it, th those would go out on six channels on the mixer. But for recording purposes, that's not ideal. This is ideal for recording purposes. Uh, because now I have this instrument going to that stereo channel, regardless of how many notes I play, right? And then if I come down to this, it's on its own channel. Two notes of infinity on this, this flanger bass. See, two notes of infinity. But, again, it's going to one single channel, which is ideal for recording. Same thing with the bongos. Right, so that is how the voices work in terms of how they're set up. Um, one other thing to point out is the um, MIDI mapping. Yes, so again, this is coming into uh, the Fairlight Series 3 has three MIDI input ports and um, I think four output ports. So port A, B, and C for inputs. And so on any given instrument, I can specify the, um, the port and the MIDI channel. So if I wanted to say that Planus Aliots would respond to an external keyboard plugged into MIDI port B on channel five, then I would simply type, I think this works, B5 and set, and it doesn't match. <laughs> right. Uh, let's see what you do five set. Yeah. So it does that. Uh, and in terms of the port, ah, see so you select the port. And so it'll respond on MIDI channel five on port a and then on port B it'll listen to port one or uh, MIDI channel one, unless I'd say, you know, like eight or something. Right. And so now it'll, all right. So you get a lot of flexibility there. Um, let's put those back. A. Let that also. All right. Uh, but again, the important thing is if I'm playing with an external keyboard set to MIDI channel one, it's playing the instrument, not the voice. And the instrument's a container with all the voices inside in it and does all the right routing stuff in terms of, of audio output. Okay, so that's about that. Now let's hop over into caps. Caps, um, if I am going to, let's just say, for example, I'm going to set up a, I want to loop um, the first two measures, right? Um, now, if you watch the Chris Blythe video, what he shows doing is that you can uh, hold your shift key down and you can navigate around to the different measures with the arrow keys. You press the home key, go to the next major and press home key again, right? And then you press shift clear and that clears that out. Another really neat tree trick you can do if you want to loop a much larger reason, region is simply hold the shift key down. Then with your G pin, just click on the major, the first major, and then go to the ending major. And then bam, that sets your whole region that you can, uh, that holding the shift key down, and then you can do F15 and it'll loop that region, right? But what I really want is just to do this little section here. Plus also look at that, see how quickly I can just, oh, I want it this long. Oh, let's make it that long, right? See, so very quickly with the G pen, I can uh, select the region that I want. I can then hit, hit um, F15 and now it's just gonna loop between uh, those two uh, particular measures and somewhere around here, oh, there we go. Um, and as you can see, it, it automatically does the metronome. I just have it muted, so. All right, so there's my metronome. All right, so let's stop that for a second and let, let's do this. I'm gonna set the tempo to be slower, but I wanna, I wanna do this whole big section here, right? So I want the tempo to be 
let's say 100. So I type in 100 and then I hit F3 for tempo. And then that sets uh, this whole region to be a tempo of 100. Okay, and then let's come back here. Oops, let's go there, and like so. And so if I hit, right. Now, let's go into measure view. So I hit escape M and that puts me into measure view. And I'm on planet A alias, so I can just go Except I need to drop in three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, so we got that. Um, I did uh, mess up on the, um, this is actually supposed to be the first note um, of the first measure. And so again, I learned this from watching Chris Bly's video. Thank you, Chris. Um, we can just kind of go to the, uh, use the bracket keys here to go note to note. And then whatever our quantization setting is up here, I can hold the shift key down and advance by those, by that quantization amount. So if I hold shift and hit clear, uh, to clear out my selection and I go back to that first note and I hit shift home, it's going to select that note. I can hold shift, go to that next measure and then do a move merge, which is eight and bada bing, bada boom, it moves that note over. And now what we want to do is we want to go and grab that note, shift home. Now, what did I do? What did he do? Um, oh my, that's clear. I'm in measure two. That note, this note, shift home. So now I have it. And if I go shift back arrow so now i'm at the beginning of the measure oh by the way i could use my g pen and just click oh let's put it right here let's put it right there um i could that's the faster way to do it instead of trying to you know sometimes the keyboard's faster sometimes the g pen just kind of depends again uh, move merge, shabam. And so now if we were to um, watch this, um, shift home, go here and move merge, Dun, shift home, bam, move merge. Shift home. You get the idea. So let's um, let's go back into Opus View. Um, oh, by the way, you can do Escape L, and it'll give you the little Opus up there. And you can I think you can do this. Shabam, just like that, and then. Uh, so yeah. And then if we, if we're again, so if I'm playing that and I go, uh, six, and that's what we want. Right. Uh, so I have, a, I have a stereo. <laughs> that would correspond to uh, two channels in Logic for recording purposes.
so yeah. Um, then if I click on one of these um, other uh, uh, instruments here, as you can see, it's showing me the notes for, for whatever instrument I have selected, right? Um, so let's see here, if I go, It's going to make the uh, best thing to do is. Supposedly, there's a way to get the tempo of the waveform. Let's see if we can figure that out. Um, that should, I think it's on. <sighs> what are we going to do? We're going to go. where it is so we're gonna do this old school what do we do here we're gonna use do 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 Guitar Toolkit. First thing we need to do is we need to loop that. So let's go. I think I might just turn this on. That's 90 Q. So let's uh ba 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 be boo stick him and escape O Tra la 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 see look at that whoa no let's do this let's hit uh shift clear shift select whole range bam and we go 92 tempo calculating. Okay, now if we go and in theory, if I play this. Yep, that lines up. Play. Oh, again. Let's do this.
no, actually not that one. Uh, this one. this one. idea well folks that's going to wrap it up for this time i sure have enjoyed making this video and i certainly hope you've enjoyed watching it be sure to like and comment below if you'd like to see more videos like this and um, i do plan on making more videos where i'll show more capabilities of the fairlight series 3 um, as well as maybe doing some direct feature comparisons uh, to uh, programs that are out there that emulate the fairlight um, so that's going to wrap it up until next time. So long.